we started making music like uh, two and a half years ago as Sterl Atlas. And that was like, I guess, the first time that two of us started making music. But Loie here has a, has a longer career in uh, pop music and, and rock music. Um, uh, maybe you want to take it off and tell you telling a bit about your your career? Yes. So um, I played in a band in Iceland many years ago. Like we started in 2006. Um, through that band we started a record label and a studio. We sold pretty many albums in Iceland and we toured a lot in in Europe and uh, in the States, so we had some uh, capital to to build a studio and uh, to build a studio and uh, uh, start a record label. And uh, like you know, Iceland is a small community. You know, it's uh, we were lucky to have uh, yeah, just have success in Iceland. And uh, for the last six years, I've been working as a producer. Uh, I know these guys since since I was uh, since I moved to Iceland. I moved to Iceland back in '95. We were three years old when we met. Sebastian, he lived in Copenhagen until he was six, so we met then. And um, yeah, I don't know. We we moved in together like 2012. We were three guys together. Um, we needed uh, to do a birthday gift for the third guy. So we decided to just go to a studio and do a EP. And uh, that's how we started this project. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it became, I would not say that it was like, of course it was uh, when you go to a studio to do a birthday EP, it's, it's more comical, you know? But uh, we did some songs, we liked them, uh, realized that, yeah, this is kind of a, something that we want to try to more of. Released one song, it became uh, like, I don't know, it became pretty popular. Like, you know, Iceland, it's 320,000 people. So like when we released the first song, we got, I think around 25 or 30,000 streams on the first day, which is like in really Iceland. Good, really good in Iceland. Yeah, that's really good in Iceland, you know, for a, like a first project. And then, would, you know, then it was all supposed to be like mysterious, who is Sterl Atlas, all that stuff. We kept that going for some months and just, yeah. Since then we've done uh, three, three mixtapes, a couple of EPs and stuff like that. Yeah, and we've like moved from one studio to another. Like when we started out, like the two of us at least, we had like, of course, like we're passionate about music and music that we listen to, but we didn't really have any uh, ground to know what kind of music like we would like to do. And I think we have been like exploring a lot for the last two and a half years, exploring like what kind of music we want to do and like just our style as a whole. And uh, I've like find out, found out that I like like the whole R&B and singing part much more versus the whole rap thing, which I think like we were labeled in Iceland very much as a, as a rap band and we still are labeled as a rap band and of course we are, th are that like from uh, one perspective but like uh, I like this I like these chill vibes a bit better and I think that like our music is definitely heading more there with with uh, each release that we do yeah I, I, I had never done music until we started this and I, I just found out like a couple of weeks ago, what kind of music I want to make. Uh, like, uh, uh, we've been doing the Sterla, as Sterla was saying, like, Sterla Atlas is more of like an R&B singing uh, uh, project, whereas I have leaned more towards doing like hip hop and rap. So it's been a really, like, nice journey for me to, to go through this, to do this project and like, really find out what is to find your your field of special specialty is really nice and like really grateful for everything. I think that like our, our whole visual world in Iceland really helped us like build up our like success, I guess, in Iceland because like a lot of the bands hadn't really a lot of like hip hop bands like that are branded like us 
hadn't really put like that much consideration into it, maybe at that time or something. But we like were really um, we were really bu busy, like just posting a lot of pictures that our friend was taking, and he. His name is uh, Kjartan Hreinsson. He like helped us build the visual world world for the like for the first year, I guess. And uh, then, like uh, now, like uh, for our last two videos, like Johan, he, he has a really dominant part in like uh, the visual world of the of the band. Do you want to say a few words about it? Yeah. I think we have uh, what what helped us a lot building this like project is that we like always considered the music and like this whole to be a brand, and so like the music was just one output of the brand. It's like we have made merchandise, we've made like fragrances, we've made like we're trying to expand this this idea of what uh, merchandise is, and like because we we don't sell physical copies, we only stream the music online for free. So we're trying to like uh, create more content so for so people can relate that to the music and like if they relate to the lifestyle or the aesthetic or so like and we've worked a lot with uh, graphic designer Siki Otz who's from Iceland who is like really forward thinking in this this idea of what a brand is capable of so like uh, that's definitely been a big factor of this of creating a, like a whole aesthetic like that fits the music and the visual content and like everything revolving around Sturt Atlas. Yeah, and also just um, like they said, the guys, it's uh, Iceland doesn't really have a like a music scene, like a music industry, I would say, rather than a music scene. It doesn't have a music industry in the in the sense that. Uh, there are no major labels. Uh, the only labels are just uh, super independent. They don't have any uh, advances or stuff like that. They just mainly cover the costs of uh, of uh, producing the the physical copies and stuff like that. So it's uh, it hasn't been like Norman and Iceland to uh, like really develop a like a um, like a visual identity around pants, you know. Like people never th thought that, whoa, we can like uh, sell fucking uh, fragrances, you know, as a merchandise, or or we can uh, uh, sign so we, a water bottle or something be, like that. We gotta be in the studio. Oh my God, we gotta ah, be in the studio. But um, yeah, we decided just to uh, do like a 360 approach to everything, you know. We all grew up in uh, 101 Reykjavik, which is the, the downtown of uh, Reykjavik. And uh, we're like our music is much more inspired by being like in this uh, small city urban environment. And that is kind of the where, where we found our passion. You know, one one Reykjavik has been uh, kind of uh, it's it has changed a lot. We've lived there now for twenty years, and it's uh, I mean it's a small city, but it's uh, we we you know it's changing a lot. We're having a lot of. Uh, tourists and uh, weird stuff happening there at the moment. So our motive has, has always been uh, more about, uh, you know, conserving the, the 101, yeah, our neighborhood, the 101 mentality. Yeah, and the whole like nature thing, of course, it's like, like the nature is a really big part of growing up in Iceland and being an Icelander that like, we have all those these beautiful landscapes, and and uh, a lot of musicians and artists have have like used that in their in their art. Like Björk and Sigurós, you know, they really flex the the mountains and stuff. And like, I don't really know. I, I think like at the time that we started, it was like it was just kind of a cliche. Like we we just released a video, uh, and it has a lot of like landscape you know, frames and we're using the nature. And, uh, you know, of course we're using it because it's beautiful and we want to do it, but at the same time we're like kind of, you know, I don't, I don't really know how to put it into words, but it, it's... Uh, yeah, it's kind of just cliche seeing yeah. an Icelandic music video with, with, you know, the moss and all that stuff. But we just did it because it was, you know, we had to do something. 